Okay, for this we want to input five numbers between uh, 10 and 100. We want to display as we go if it is unique, if it hasn't been entered yet. And then at the end we want to display all unique. So if we enter uh, 10, 10, 20, 20, 20, after here it would say this is the first time you've entered 10, after here it says this is the first time you've entered 20, and at the end you'd, it would say uh, one unique value is 10 and the second unique value is 20. So let's do it. We're going to need to import the scanner because we're going to accept the input values and everything is going to be inside the duplicate elimination class. Okay, the first first method we have is going to be a boolean. It's going to be is in. So it's is is the value that's being entered in the list that's already that we already have. Uh, the value that we're, we want to see if it's in it is going to be the int x and the array the integer array y is what we're checking it so we need to pass both of those to the method we're going to initialize what what will be returned as false because we picked false but we could do it the other way and then we're going to have a for loop going through going through the length of y the number of values in y checking it so if if there's three numbers in y it's going to check each one of the three if y the index at the index of i in y is equal to the value we want it to be equal or we want to check if it's equal we're going to change is into true we're not going to have an else case because it's already false so we don't need to redefine it as false all we have to do is return is in so this will allow us to run an is in method checking if x is in y which we'll be doing in the main function first we're going to define a second the second second function is going to append it's going to be an append function it's going to take it's going to take the current list and then add one to it so we're going to it's going to return an array an integer array it's going to accept a single integer and it's going to accept also a the current integer so we're going to pass it this and this we're going to add this to it and then we're going to return the whole thing to do that we're going to we need to declare the the length we're going to need to declare the length of an array so we need to know the length the length is this is just a single integer so it's going to be one more than this so the length which is an integer is the length of this plus one and then we're going to initialize a new I just call it a we can call it something better if you want a new integer array new int and the length which we have to tell it is len this thing that we just figured out so now we know how long this is but it's a blank array we need to populate it we need to add stuff to it so we're going to add everything there might be a simpler way to do this I think there is like copy or something but we're going to iterate through the length of y which is this just shorter one 
So we're going to be one short, but we're going to basically copy everything into the new array A, whatever is the new the old I. And the last thing we're going to do is the length, the 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 index, this is the index of A, is the length, the last, the last one, the last index we're going to add our value that we passed it. So this gives everything but the last one. This one adds the last, the last index. And then we can return A. So now we have our appended integer array. That's it for the helper functions. Now we're going to get into the main meat of things, our, our regular argument. I call scanner stdin standard input. You can call it something else, it's just input, whatever you want to call it. Your standard uh, scanner initializer. We're going to initialize the list. Uh, for the first value that we enter, um, we know it's going to be unique because there's nothing in the list yet. So, and and the, I put a value in there. I don't know if I needed to or not. So our message that we're going to print out to the screen: enter an integer between 10 and 100 and then we're going to have an integer I call it entered you can change it if you want and if you if you called the input something else you need to call it something else here too we're going to grab the next integer that's going to be the first entered and then the next thing I say it's a printf, it's a formatted print statement. This is, since it's the first value, it's clearly the first time that whatever they entered, percent %d, has been entered new line. And then the percent %d is this entered. We know it's unique. We know it is a unique value, so we want to add it to the list. So that's just the first value because it's clearly the first value is unique. The future values are going to be determined through this for loop here, and it's only going to be from i from one to four, or from zero to four, well zero to three. I guess we could do one to four. So I need to be four times because the first value is a special case. The first value is always unique and is always going to be in the um, array, in integer array. We're going to say the same. I'll copy it. It's going to say the same thing. We're going to retrieve, well, replace the value is fine for entered. And since we're replacing it, we don't need to declare it. It's already an integer. And now we need to ask, is it already in, is it already in the list? Now we have a list. It's called unique list. Yeah, or I guess an array, integer array, and we have a value, it's called entered. We want to know if entered is in unique list. We've defined a function is in that takes a value and an array and tells us true or false if it's in. So let's call that function.
if is in entered is the value we want to check unique list is the array that we want to check equals false so this means that it is not already in the array it means it's a unique value we want to print this statement and we want to append and again this is this function that we've defined I think there might already be a function in Java that I don't know about but I just made one up and the value we're adding is entered value the uh, array we're adding it to is that that's all for that so we've we've now this will have gone through all the values and it will have created the unique list to its completion from one to five though if it's not if we have some duplicates the list won't be five long it will only be however long it is we don't we don't initialize it to five here to make it efficient we, we only add one to its size in the append as needed which only happens inside this if statement so it's only as long as it should be now we want to print the whole list the complete list of unique values entered is Now, the way it wants to be displayed is on individual lines. So we're going through a for loop. The length of the list, the length of the array. And we want to print a formatted statement. Unique value and then this is going to be unique value 1, unique value 2, 3 or 4 but we'll define that in a second is whatever it is and then the values of these two D's will define here which is what the printf does if you don't know printf allows you to put a generic something here and replace it with its specific something here i plus one we want to be here because we're going from i equals zero to start but unique value isn't the first one isn't zero it's one and unique list the unique list at that number at that index and I believe that's everything some closing brackets that's all and we'll run it down here it'll run enter in integer so we'll do 20 20. So it said it's the first time 20 has been entered. It didn't say anything for the second 20. 30. It's the first time 30 has been entered. Let's do 30 again. Doesn't say anything. 40. So it should say unique value 1 is 20, 30, 40. And also it did say it's the first time 40 has been entered. That is all for that project. Thanks.